falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever Church, uh, privilege is mine to take a few minutes to sum up the. Take a few minutes to sum up the, the lesson. Uh, if you look at the program, I was given originally about um, five minutes, but now I've been told I should use two minutes. Um, I don't know how I do that. Um, Normally, we would take about half an hour to do the lesson, uh, but um, we'll try and do the best that we can within the short space of time. Can we bow down our heads and have a short prayer? Our Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for your blessings. I pray that as we look uh, into your word, uh, your presence be with us. And please uh, grant us the, the grace and the favor so that we can live according to your expectations. Thank you, Father, for answer prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, let's be honest. How many of us have studied the lesson? How many of us, can we see by show of hands? How many of us, especially the young people? Okay. Um, I don't see many hands. Maybe you are being modest. But if we look at the lesson, we are looking at lesson 12. And uh, the title is Christ, Church, and the Law. Christ, Church, and the Law. Uh, remember very quickly where is it found? Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Can we take our Bibles? And at least if we can't go any further, can we read uh, the memory verse? Please take your Bibles because it's study time. Take our Bibles, please. Revelation chapter 14, verse two, 12. Sorry. Revelation 14, verse 12. Are we there? Okay. Um, if we are there, then let's all read it together. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith in Jesus. Okay, so here we learn that the characteristics or the futures of those who, who eventually uh, meet Christ when he shall come uh, are those who keep the commandments of God and they also have the faith in who? In faith in Jesus. 
Now, if I had time and I were to ask you what are some of the commandments of God, what, quickly, what can be some of the commandments of God? What has God commanded us to do? Remember the Sabbath day, another one? If I can get a, a specific individual, brother, yes? We should not kill. What else from here? No, we should not steal. So these are the commandments of God. And if we read elsewhere, we know that the commandments are the uh, transcripts of God's character. They, in other words, tell us who God is. And we move on further and we see that those who will be overcome it are those who have faith uh, in Jesus. We read from John 3, uh, verse 16. Let's repeat it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. So if we have faith in Jesus, it will then naturally propel us to want to keep the commandments of God. And if we look into history, we will realize that throughout history, right from um, Adam to our present day, there are people who have uh, stood up uh, to uh, keep, on, in other words, to, to promise themselves with the help of God uh, to keep the commandments of God. Um, reason simply, going back to um, Aiden, we realize that God gave Adam and Eve certain commandments, especially if we take it from um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 18. There was a specific instruction that they should not touch the tree of knowledge of good and what? And evil. Because the day they would do that, they would surely die. Of course, we know the outcome that Adam and Eve uh, were not able to keep to what God expected uh, of them. Now, the key question is, why did God create Adam and Eve with the capacity or the, the propensity to, to do evil? Um, time will not allow me to, to give it to the audience. But very quickly, if God had created them um, without the ability or the capacity to do evil, then they would have become what they call innocent automata. Uh, in other words, they couldn't have loved God um, or keep his commandments out of love. But because God wants man to, you and I, to make a choice, he gave us the capacity either to do what is right or to do what is wrong. Now, the challenge is that we value so much the, 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 command, uh, the, um, the choice that God has given to us. But how are you and I exercising this choice? Uh, God has given you the ability to uh, make the right choices, especially having had Christ to die on Calvary's cross for us. And it's for you and I to uh, sit down and see how we are going to exercise this choice. Uh, we cannot blame uh, Adam for what he did uh, because we read from the scriptures that we have second Adam through the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning, my uh, challenge to you and I uh, is that we may seek to cooperate with the will of God so that the choices that God has given to us uh, will be exercised in the right way. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Amen, Amen church. Amen. I'm not, I'm not usually in the mood to rush things, but I know that we've got many more things in store for you this morning, and we don't want the saints to get too wary. Amen. Um, what we really wanted to, for you to get from this Sabbath school this morning um, is that to be a servant, you must firstly think like a servant. Um, it requires a, a shift in your mind and a specific state of mind. We have to remember that God is always more interested in why we do something than in what we actually physically do. And an example of this is King Amaziah in Second Chronicles who did what was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a pure heart. A key attitude to have as a servant is to firstly be self-forgetful, to not focus on you but to focus on others, to empty ourselves of self for someone else's benefit. We can't be servants if we are full of ourselves because when we are full of ourselves then, and then all we aim to do is please through service is ourselves. Our actions become like a self-service, almost like buying milk in, in, a, in a Tesco Express. We serve ourselves. But when we say, Lord, make me a servant, let our actions be pure. Let us not serve to get others to be like us or admired or to, be, or to achieve our own personal goals. But let us be described as Caleb, how Caleb was described in the book of Numbers. In Numbers 14, 24, when the Lord spoke of Caleb, he said, But because my servant Caleb had a different spirit and followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. 
And my prayer for you this day is that God is, is that God is able to say the same thing about us and that he will bring us into his kingdom to dwell eternally during the second coming. Amen. 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 I want to thank everybody for being involved in the service this morning. I want to thank um, the praise team for leading out in song service. Was we blessed by the song service? Amen. We want to thank the drama group who are called to um, act out the scenario. Was we blessed by the scenario? I want to thank Brother Donald for leading us out in discussion. I want to thank um, Elder Ajay for leading us out with the summary of our Sabbath school lesson. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for being, for being present and for listening to the program that we've actually delivered so far. Um, we're going to close in prayer at this time by Brother Clive. So if we could all stand for the closing prayer. Okay, let's bow. Dear Lord, we thank you for the lessons that you've given us today. We thank you that you have made, not made us ignorant of who you are, Lord, but you reveal your will to us daily through your word. We pray that as we move on from here, Lord, that we might take in these lessons, that they might become a part of our lives, that we might move on being people that seek to be your servants, Lord, that we might move on with renewed hearts and remove all self from us, Lord. We pray that as the day proceeds, that you be with those that are going to present your word to the people, Lord, in whatever capacity they do. We pray that you make them, you remind them, Lord, that it is your name and your name only that is to be glorified. And that, Lord, it, they're preaching to your people, Lord, for your sake, Lord, that there is no self whatsoever in them as they present your word. And we pray that as we go from here, Lord, that you make us a people that that not only keep, to, keep your word to ourselves, Lord, that we don't renew ourselves in our homes, in the corners of our walls, Lord, but we spread your word to others, Lord, that the renewing of, of people's spirits goes on like a virus throughout our communities, Lord, throughout this East London. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two, two. Okay, a wonderful happy Sabbath and a wonderful good morning to you all. Uh, my name is Serena. Um, I'm the youth leader of Ilford Central Church, and I want to warmly welcome you here to our new, we're in our new building now. So those of you who've never been here before, welcome. Um, at this time, I'd just like to do just a bit of social research, just because I'm interested in people and know where people are from. I know this is Area 6C, Day of Fellowship. So for those who are from the East London area, just raise your hands. Yeah, I see a lot of you. Uh, majority. Um, those who are coming from North London, can you raise your hands? Amen. Welcome, welcome. Those from the South of London... Okay, I see a few hands. I see a few hands. Welcome, welcome. And those from the West? Okay, there's no one who's made that journey today, what I can see. All right, I want to um, warmly welcome you this morning. I see one hand. I want to warmly welcome you this morning. And we want you to feel welcome. So at this time, we're going to sing a welcome song. Let us greet somebody. So just like, you know, give a, give a hug, give a handshake to the person next to you. And just to get up out of your seat and get to know each other a bit better. So we're going to sing, let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. We're going to sing, let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let's make each other feel welcome. Let's sing, let us greet. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile because Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Let's, let us greet. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Let's sing that one more time. Let us greet somebody. Let us greet somebody. 
Let us tell them that we love them. Tell someone that you love them today. Tell them we can work together. In Jesus' name, everybody smile. Say, Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Okay, at this time, it would be remiss of me to forget a birthday. Because one of our young people, uh, Jonathan, has a birthday today. Um, Jonathan, can you raise your hand? Are you here? Can we see you? Oh, I see. I see Jonathan. He's at the back. Okay, come a bit forward so people can see who you are. Give away, Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan is one of our young people here. So just at this time, um, we'll just like to raise a little happy birthday song to him. So Jonathan, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. today, Jonathan. Um, at this time, it's also my pleasure to introduce to you uh, the platform party. As I said, my name is Serena Francis, um, leave you to hear. Um, to my left here, I have Sana, who will be, um, if you can give us a stand, go away so we can see you. She's from the London Asian Church, she's joining us today. Um, to my left, um, the call to worship was done by Brother Kishroy here. And also we have uh, Brother Eugene here as well. Amen. Just next to him. Amen. And of course, the message of the hour will be brought to us by Shireen Rodney. Can you give us a wave? Amen. 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 She's right here. Amen. And I just want you to be feel blessed today. Enjoy the fellowship. And um, at this time, uh, we're going to go into our season of praise and worship. So I'm going to hand over to the team here. Gonna leave. Oh, Warren. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord today, saints? No, 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 no. You guys don't seem happy. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord today, saints? Yes. The Bible says that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go yes. into the house of the Lord. The psalmist then goes on to say, let everything that has breath, what? Praise Have you got breath? Yes. So what should we be doing? Praise I just want to formally welcome you to the first annual, uh, we're trying to make this annual, Area 6C Day of Fellowship. But I just want you quickly to just turn to your neighbor on the left side and say, neighbor. neighbor. No, 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 no. Say, neighbor. neighbor. It's good to see you here. It's good to see you here. I don't think that neighbor was listening to you. So turn to your other neighbor and say, other neighbor. Other neighbor. Oh, other neighbor. oh, other neighbor. It's good to see you here this morning. Oh, I don't think that neighbor was listening to you. So speak to yourself and say, self. Self. Oh, self. Oh, self. I'm glad that I'm here this morning. I'm glad that I'm here this morning. So as you know, we're a part, from, a part of LYF and the Era 60 team. And we're just simply here to serve you. If you need any, uh, anything, uh, my team will be here. Jer Jermaine, Latiqua, and Jason uh, just to serve you. So now we're going into our praise and our worship spot. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Ah, oh, come on. You gave all that to Warren and then you can't give me, can't give God anything. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Who's here to give God praise this morning? <laughs> I know I did. Um, it's been a trying week. It really, really has for me. But above all, above all, God is still good. And I really mean that when I say God is still good. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm going to give God my best today. I'm going to give God everything that is within me. Everything that he's given to me, I'm going to give back to him this morning. And we're going to start off by singing a song that says, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Who's redeemed this morning? Everybody's hands should be up. And we're not redeemed by just any old thing, but we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb, saints. Amen. So we're going to sing that this morning. Not this song. Um, redeemed how I love to proclaim it we're going to continue God is still good let's go okay let's 
Let's sing. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed, how I love Redeemed to by the blood it. of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Let's say redeemed. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. His child and forever Let's say I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of my blessed I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Let's raise our voices and sing redeemed. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. His child and forever I am. Let's say I know. Guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Let's say, Redeemed, 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 Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever. Let's say, Redeemed. child and forever his child and forever I am his child and forever I am his child and forever his child and forever I am his child and forever I am amen amen we're going to teach you a very easy song this morning this song just says every praise is to our God every word of worship with one accord every praise Every praise is to our God. It's such an easy song. We're going to sing it through for you. And I want you to join in once you get it. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is due our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Are we going to give him every praise this morning? Amen. Let's sing that this morning. I'm going to ask you to put your hands together. We're going to give God praise this morning. And I don't know about you, but I want you to be free in how you worship God this morning. If you want to stand and wave your hands because you know what God has done for you, do so. Don't be restricted this morning. Okay, so the song goes like this. If you know it, sing along. Let's sing. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise. Let's sing that again. See every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. With one accord. With one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. To our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. God, let's take it up. Sing the same thing again. Sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Let me hear you sing hallelujah to your God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word. 
word of worship in one accord every praise every praise is to our God sing hallelujah To our, to our God, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is, to is to our God. Okay, the next part of the song goes like this, simply like this. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, He is. God my healer, God my deliverer, say yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, sing God my Savior, is he all here this morning, say God my healer, say God my deliverer, With one accord, every praise, 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 all of my worship, every praise, everything I have, every praise. your hands today somebody say hallelujah because every praise is not for ourselves but it's to our God amen we're going to sing these are the days of Elijah this is one of my favorite songs because for me I have such a vivid imagination so when it gets to the chorus and it says behold he comes and he's riding on a cloud I can imagine that cloud that cloud is the, the whitest fluffiest cloud I've ever seen and it said it's shining like the sun brighter than it is today at the trumpet call we need to lift our voice it's the year of jubilee not the queen but our king it's the year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes if you want to stand with us this morning let's sing this song as we say that these are the days of elijah
There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Yes, to you. Let's get some marching practice in now. I need everyone to stand on your feet. Because I don't want to get to heaven and the person next to me doesn't know how to march. Amen. What we do here every week, every day is a dress rehearsal for somewhere in heaven. So let's get our praise in now so we know how we're going to praise if we get to heaven. The song says we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let's go. Come we be that and let our songs be known join in a song with sweet accords join in a song with sweet accords and thus surround the throne surround the throne and the surround say we're marching to Zion we're marching to Zion let me see you march Just the ladies on the second verse. Let those refuse to sing. That sounds so beautiful. And then, who never knew our God? But children of the heavenly king. But children of the heavenly king. May speak their joys abroad. May speak their joys abroad. Okay, men, I want to sing the third verse. The hill of Zion yield. A thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly fields. Before we reach the heavenly fields, come on, men, or walk the golden streets. Yeah, that sounds nice and manly. Let's all join in. Say we're marching, marching to Zion, the beautiful, beautiful city of Zion. songs about and every tear be dry imagine we're marching through Emmanuel's grounds we're marching through Emmanuel's grounds to fairer worlds on high 
to fairer worlds on high. Say we're marching to the beautiful. Marching upwards, we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upwards to heaven. Zion, the, the beautiful city of God. You don't have to sit down. You can keep standing if you want. We're going to sing about how our God is great. Is our God a great God? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. God, you are healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Amen. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, none like you. Out of the darkness we shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, Say, our God is great, our God is stronger, Lord you are higher. Water, water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes, open the eyes. Oh, there's no one like you. There's no one like you. None like you. None like you. Say, into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, Lord. Say, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Say, our God, our God. Sing, your grace, your holy. Say, your grace, your worthy. Your grace. There's nobody, there's nobody greater than you. Let's say that again. Say, your grace. Your great, say your great, your holy, say your great, and your mighty.
My God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. God, you are healer. And you're awesome in power, my God. My God. My God is greater. My God is stronger. I'm telling you, he's higher than any other. My God is healer. And he's awesome in power. Our God. Our God. How deep the Father's love. To make this wretch his treasure. How deep the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away. Bring many sons to glory. Let's sing the next verse. Behold the man upon the cross. My sin. My sin. Upon his shoulders. Upon his shoulders. Ashamed. My mocking boy, and they call out, call out among the scoffers, among the scoffers. say it was. I will not boast. I will not boast in anything. No gifts. No gifts. No power. No power. No wisdom. No wisdom. But say, but I will boast in Jesus Christ. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain? Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know in all my heart. His wounds have paid. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know. I know with all 
Jesus His words It was His words When they nailed you to the cross It was your words When they pierced you in your side Your wounds When I stray too far from you It is your wounds When I feel I've gone too far Your wounds When I've fallen short of your will Your When we sing this song, we don't truly understand how deep the, the Father's love for us. I just want to sing that last verse again. I will not boast in anything. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. I don't think you understand how deep God's love is for us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, God died for us. The Bible says that God is love. You see, his, his love is not conditional like our love. So we don't necessarily have to be good to him for, for, in order for him to be good to us. He loves because that's him. That's in his DNA. He don't love because you're doing something good for him. He loves you regardless of what you've done. Regardless of who you are. And that's how deep the Father's love. And the worst thing, I'm trying to explain this. But just think about the deepest and the purest love that you felt. And times that by infinite. And that's God's love. I can't explain it. Because how deep God's love is, we never know. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He said he was wounded for my transgressions. And by his stripes, I'm healed. Can we sing that last verse? I will not boast. Let's sing the last verse. I will not boast in anything. Oh, I will, I will. This song if you really mean it.
God is the joy and the strength of my life. How many people can testify to that? Hallelujah. We're going to sing one more song as we continue our service. We're just going to say that God is. And God is so great that nothing else needs to come after that because God is. That's all you need. Yeah, you can give me amazing, you can give me wonderful, gracious. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that God is full stop. Amen. Let's sing that. God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, He promised to keep me. He promised to keep me. Never to leave me. Never to leave me. He'll never ever fall short of his word. I'm going to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean. Every day. I want to go with him. I want to go with him when he comes back. I'll come too far and I'll never turn back. Say God is. God is. Oh, God is. Oh, God is. Oh, God is. God is the chorus one more time. God is a woman. I want you to stand to your feet and give him the praise as we sing the God is. Say God is. Yes, he is. Oh,
Let's bow our heads in prayer for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we could return to you some of the portion that you've blessed us with, Lord. Please use it for your cause and for your good works, Lord. Please be with the people who have uh, given uh, the tithing offerings to you. Bless them and be with them. I ask this to Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. morning church it's now time for our season of prayer I want us to do something a little different this morning can I have all the young people in this church rise please all the young people all the youth all the people that are under the age of 35 please rise I guess it's good to be specific if you're under the age of 35 please rise Okay, let's, all right, so now what I want you to do is just take a quick glance around, just look around you. There are a lot of young people that are standing up, right? Okay, you know, to you the Bible has a charge, and it's simply this, each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That's simply the charge that the Bible has placed on you this morning. Now, you know, in order to do this, we must be consecrated on a daily basis. And so I ask you to say this after me, please. Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence. And take away not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach your transgressors your way. And sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness. O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Now, church, it's time for a season of prayer. If we're being honest, a lot of us are tired today, correct? We come into the worship house. And a lot of us are tired from the week's toils, if we're being honest. And so today, if you simply have a prayer request, I'd just like you to raise your hands as we pray. Father God, Your people have come before you this morning. And so we must spend less time talking to each other and to you. Oh God, our help from ages past. Today is the first annual Area 6C Youth Day of Fellowship. You have charged your young people with a word to serve others and each other. Lord, you know our hearts. And if I'm speaking for somebody in here today, some of us even struggle to believe in you. Some of us are tired of hearing God is good and not seeing the results. But Father, I present each of us to you this morning. I know how hard the week has been for me. And the crazy things that I have heard this week. And so I know somebody in here needs you right now. 
Father, I present every soul that is standing up. I I present every soul that's hands raised this morning. That you look deep into our hearts and hear our hearts' prayers, Lord. Father, we need you to come into our midst. We need you to change us. I present the young people of Area 60 into your hands. That we may not be a people that will just come into church to hear your word. But when we go out, the world may see you through us. That our actions may represent your son, Jesus Christ. Father, hear our words this morning. I know as we pray right now, some minds have even wandered afar. But Father, you are gracious and you are a good God. And so here are our prayers this morning. I present the speaker into your hands. That you will speak through her. That every single individual that came in here may leave a changed person, Lord. Father, come into our midst this morning and send your spirit. We need you. I pray for every tired soul. That Lord, give them rest. In Jesus' name. We offer this prayer. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, happy Sabbath, church. Amen, amen. My name is Tarina. I am the Youth Federation president, and I welcome you here today to our first day of fellowship as a new team working together with Christ. Life is precious, is it not? Life is very precious. And the Bible says, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the, are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Now this week, one of our sisters from Hackney Church passed away. Sister Michelle Waith. And Sister Michelle Waith, as you'll see, was a great influence to those at Hackney Church and to those in the Youth Federation at large. And so we're here today to sing a tribute to Sister Michelle and to all those who may be grieving as well at the same time. Sister Michelle's song, Favourites Hymn, was Lead Me to Calvary. So I invite you to sing with me as we sing a tribute and encourage those who may be grieving at the same time. Sing with me. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thine agony. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to come. Show me the tomb with 
morning, church. Morning. Good morning, church. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Liliana, and her name is um, Evani. And we came from the Portuguese church and is embarking. So if we know this song, I want you lot to sing with us. Yeah. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Amen. Okay, once again, I would like to welcome you all today for our Area 60 Youth Day of Fellowship. Um, it's really beautiful to see so many people here today, especially young people. Um, one thing I found actually, especially this year, is that there's so many churches within the Area 60 uh, region that I didn't even know about. Um, and I'm sure it's the same with you. So it's good that we're coming together and we're fellowshipping together. Um, I would like to introduce the speaker for today, but before I do, um, I would like to welcome a few uh, dignitaries, as they say. We've got Pastor Kevin Johns, who is the Pathfinder leader. He's representing the youth department of the South England Conference. Welcome. Um, we've also, you've seen her before, we've got the London Youth Federation president. 
So we're definitely blessed to have the Youth Federation president here. Um, and it just so happens that the speaker for today is the vice president of the London Youth Federation. Um, I'm not going to say too much about her um, because you will see. But one thing I do know is that she has definitely been blessed. Definitely been blessed. And one thing about Shireen is that whenever you speak to her, her whole being, her one focus is that she's focused on God. That's her primary focus. So I'd like to welcome Shireen Rodney as the speaker for today. Now, I'm from London, Ghana, as you can probably tell from my Ghana cufflinks here. And um, one thing we do in London, Ghana, is we give two big amens for the speaker. So I would like Shireen to rise, and when she does, we're going to give her two big amens. Shireen, can you rise for us? Amen. And another one? Amen. Amen. I'll call Bianca Gilling for the Song of Meditation. Morning, church. I mean, after, wait, yeah, afternoon. Is everybody having a good day so far? Okay. Hope you're blessed by this song. is our faithfulness oh God my father there is no shadow turning with thee thou changest not thy compassion they fail not Ha! 
Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. There's a song that says, you don't know my story. You don't know the things that I've been through. You see, when I think about all the things that God has brought me through, you might not understand my praise. You see, when I look things over, you may not understand my praise, but God knows that my praise is a testament to his goodness. Before we go straight in the word, I just want to say um, a big thank you for um, Warren and his team in Area 6A for inviting me to speak. 6C, thank you, thank you. 6C, and on behalf of the Federation, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, now is your time. For many came out today seeking a word, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I pray right now, if anyone is looking at me thinking I have something to say, forgive them. So, Heavenly Father, I pray right now, you will hide me behind the cross, Heavenly Father. For I am a sinner saved by grace also, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, as you speak through me, speak to me. I don't know how, but you do. So, Lord, at the end of the day, may your name be glorified and may we leave here saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we believe that we have received your word. Prepare our hearts, Heavenly Father. Break up the fallow ground, Lord, because some of us, our hearts are so hard that even you have to take it out and create a new one, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, speak to us, for we are standing, waiting. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Hear our prayer. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this afternoon is taken from the book of Luke. So turn to the book of Luke with me. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. That's the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And I'll read it in your hearing. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the book of Luke 19 verse 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, I thank God for his inspiration because as I was preparing for the word, God said, no, someone else needs to hear this. It was early, it was in the early hours of Sunday morning. The actual date was June the 27th, 1976. A plane flying from Greece to Paris, carrying two to 300 passengers, men, women, and children, hijacked. Four terrorists on board, possessing guns, hand grenades, and even bombs. The plane's radars had been turned off, and this meant that the location of the plane was unknown. Air traffic control has been alerted. Now, if you read this in history, it's documented under the greatest hostage rescue in history. Sunday, the 27th of June, 1976. Airport staff at Greece are exercising their right to strike. Now, the strike means that the workers are not in attendance. Well, not all of them. You see, the workers are not there, but the airport is open. A perfect opportunity for terrorists carrying their deadly ammunition to try and get past security undetected. After all, 
When security is down, don't people let things slip by? No wonder the Bible talks about us guarding our hearts with security. The terrorists are in disguise. You see, they look like normal passengers. They know who they are, but the people do not. They are all walking in the same direction to the plane. You see, terrorists and passengers alike. The only distinguishing factor is the intentions of their heart. You see, the common denominator is in the physical. You see, they all look alike. The the physical, though, has no bearing on the spiritual because God tells us that he looks past the physical and enters into the spiritual. Not everyone who walks beside you is for you. You see, their behavior fits in with the context of the situation because they're going to board a plane. They do all the right things. They show the passport. They have the checks. They know how to do it. They dress the part. They know the scriptures. But even as they get onto the plane, their evil intentions, that includes the destruction of even their very same brothers and sisters. You see, the terrorists came in disguise, almost like a serpent in the garden. You see, they appeared harmless until the plane's journey began, and that's when they attacked. They fought their way into the pilot's cabin, and going against the pilot's will, somebody, they ordered the plane's communication system to shut down so that the plane would not be detected. And once they shut down communication They diverted the plane. I would like you to come back with me this morning. Back in time in history, even over 2,000 years ago, where a hijacker came in the disguise of a serpent into the Garden of Eden. You see, he looked the part. He fit in with the garden, for were not there animals there? As Satan saw that garden security was down, maybe because Adam was not around, he took this opportunity to bypass security undetected. You see, Satan carrying his spiritual ammunition, he got on board Adam and Eve's flight and changed their destination. And as Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, The taste of disobedience, sweet in the mouth, but bitter going down. A state of heavenly emergency was declared. Not because there was an element of surprise, but because of the severity of the consequences. That man was declared lost. You see, man was lost. God's treasured possessions, the apple of his eye, the object of his love and affection. The very man that God got down in the dust to create and form from his own hands. You see, man had disobeyed God's commandment. And the harsh reality is that both Adam and Eve did eat of the fruit. Eve ate by deception, Adam by decision. And he chose, he chose sin against God's will. And even for a moment, he chose Eve over God. And when God came walking in the garden, he realized that the scheduled flight had not arrived. You see, man was not in his usual meeting place. And God cried out and said, Adam, Adam, where are you? You see, sin will turn off your radar, church. So that God cannot pick up your frequency You see, Isaiah 59 verse 2 tells us that your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. So man has been hijacked and sin had meant that the connection between God and man's radars had been cut off. You see, there was a blockage, a barrier called sin and now the destination for man has changed. For now, man is destined to die. The hijacked plane in Greece has now landed and the location of the plane is known and the international community are looking. The plane has landed in in Intibi, Uganda under the rule of the dictator Idi Amin. 
You see, this was not a random hijack. The fact that Satan is out to jump on board and hijack your soul is not random. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He has been going up and down looking for a gap in your security. Looking for a way to enter your churches, your homes, your lives, your communities. He is looking for someone's community to be, security to be down. Now that's why in 1 Peter verse 5, God tells us to be vigilant. Be vigilant and be sober. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see, the terrorists have a specific plot. They search the passengers' passports and IDs on board and release all people except over 100 Israeli Jews. Israel is on high alert. And Israel have declared a state of national emergency. Hundreds of their own people, even their own citizens, are in need of rescuing men, women and children. Something needs to be done. You see, the Israeli army do not play with their people. They need to do something to rescue them. They come together and say, this is top secret. The army locked down the army base and secured the doors. They cut off the phone wires for this secret cannot be spilt. Men worked tirelessly for over 62 hours with no sleep to devise a plan how to rescue their people. This even sounds like a plan of redemption. The Israeli army send one of the best planes known to a- in aviation, the Hercules C-130. You see, this plane was fairly new at the time and true to its name, it was a beast of a plane. You see, it could carry machinery, cars, soldiers. It even had enough room for a makeshift hospital. But the thing was, there was only one man in Israel who could fly that plane. So the plane was, so the plan was that Israel would fly two planes, one of them being the Hercules C-130 and another plane. Now how was Israel to do this? The element of surprise was crucial to the operation to save their people all the way in Uganda. Now the plan was this. They said if we fly quite low, 10 meters above sea levels, the radars will not pick up our frequency. You see, they stayed so low to stay undetected. Sometimes we stay so low, so far away from God to stay undetected. We are just under his radar with our heads just above the water. Not only that, they needed to create an illusion that they came in peace. So what did they do? They looked at Idi Amin and his people and they saw how he rolled through. So they customized a fleet of black Mercedes. They customized the Mercedes to look like it was Idi Amin's Mercedes. They drew in, they called in local seamstresses and they sew on their uniform the Ugandan flag. The plan of redemption was planned in heaven, a secure environment. There was not even the slightest doubt that Satan could take on God. In fact, such is the power of God that he did not have to catch Satan by surprise. God told him in Genesis that he would put enmity between thee, in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, It shall bruise their head and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see, Jesus didn't have to catch Satan by surprise. He even, in Psalms, it tells us that, Psalms 22, 18, they shall divide my garments among them and for my clothing cast lots. You see, God's deliverance of man is not dependent on the element of surprise. What I mean is that God even revealed the plan of how he would save man. He revealed it which some people may call prematurely. 
Help me, Jesus. And the devil knew that God was planning how to save hijacked man. And that's why he tried to distract Jesus. When he came to Jesus in the wilderness and said, turn that stone into bread, could he not have done it by his word? For did his word not bring life into existence? Did God's word not call Lazarus from the dead? It was not the lack of power from his word, but that wasn't Jesus' mission. You see, Jesus came to us specifically on a rescue mission for humanity. The Israeli army land in Uganda and in one sweep they rescue their people. A big shootout takes place. Bullets are flying everywhere. But now, it's now or never. Their people, they have to go. The civilians have made it to the plane. The commander has commanded the soldiers to guide them towards the plane. Psalms 91 verse 11. For I will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They make it onto the plane. They hear the news that Idi Amin and his men are on their way to the airport. They need to leave now. You see, the mission has been accomplished. And as they take off into the air, news comes from the radio that their commander has been killed. As they take off into the air, the mission has been accomplished, but at the cost of their commander. Let me think about this. The plan of redemption, at the cost of Jesus Christ, he declared mission accomplished. For John 3.16 tells us, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever what, believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the devil being the liar that he is, he wants worship at all costs. It doesn't matter how you give it to him. He wants it. And because Adam and Eve sinned, we, humanity, was born onto a hijacked plane. Born into a situation that we did not take part in creating. Born into a flight with a destination to hell. But because God looked past my fault and he saw my need, he sent his only begotten son to come on board, to break through into the pilot's cabin, to take, I don't think the planes have wheels, but to take the wheel and to change the destination of the flight. There may be someone here today who says, Lord, I acknowledge that my flight is on the wrong journey and I need you to come on board and change the destination. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me where I've fallen short, to take full control of the plane, even of my life. You see, some of us are on autopilot. We think we've got it together. We think we're okay because we're enjoying the ride, but check your ticket. Where is your destination? Check your ticket. God has already done for us what we could not do for ourselves. He has already sent his son to come and save you. Bound for hell, God came and changed that destination. And I was talking to God and I said, Lord, I just don't understand how you could love man how you could love me. Time and time again, the things that we do, the way that we hurt you, but yet you are not phased by that because your love is unconditional. How, Lord? Every, if God is love, everything he does is out of love. And I'm going to be honest, this I, this, I struggled with this. I said, Lord, everything you do is out of love. I said, Lord, do you love Satan? And the Lord gave me these words. It was before time began that Lucifer caught a glimpse of his own reflection. He looked inwardly and began to reflect on his own beauty, his high position. He took it upon himself to promote himself where there was no available position. To promote himself 
to a position he could not and did not qualify for. His quest for such a promotion was in fact a quest to denote, destroy and dethrone God. For God does not and cannot exist outside of his rightful position as king of king and lord of lords. A created being, even Lucifer, seeking the very unimaginable, the very life of the one who created him, the very life of the God who holds worlds in his hands. And this is what God said. It was even out of love that God did not allow the devil to take such a position that he could not fulfill. In fact, if Satan has succeeded in dethroning and destroying God, the very essence and embodiment of life, he would by default have even destroyed himself. Such is the love of God, because nothing exists without God. Because of God's undying love for you, he kept his mind on his mission. Mission to save man because he recognized that man was in a situation that he could not get out of. He was hijacked and held hostage to sin. You see, wherever you are in your life, wherever your plane is heading, God is willing and able to come and find you even in midair and get onto your plane and change the destination around. You see, he is able to come and pilot you safely home. When man was at his worst state, at his lowest point, deeply stained in the stench of sin, God had to send his best. Because man was at his worst, God had to send his best. And the best that God had was his son, Jesus Christ. You see, David says in Psalms 51 verse 5 that, In sin did my mother conceive me. Do we have it up? Psalms 51 verse 5. In sin did my mother conceive me. David, born in sin, born on a hijacked plane that was destined to hell until Jesus came on board and took control and diverted the plane heavenward bound. You see, yes, God's law says that the soul that sins should surely die, but the moment that Jesus got onto your plane, he said, but... But the grace of God is eternal life. And that's why when God came walking in the garden, looking for Adam and Eve's flight, he cried out to say, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Because anywhere you are without me means that you are lost. You may have put it off for weeks, but where are you? Can you hear the Lord calling your name? Where are you? Anywhere without me, you were lost. Where are you? I didn't see you today or yesterday. Where are you? I love you with an everlasting love. Where are you? Time and time again, we run away from God and we reject him and he's running after us and saying, do you know what? Your rejection doesn't faze me because I'm running after you. Where are you? You see, your rejection doesn't faze me because I started running before you were born. Where are you? Your rejection doesn't faze me for I started this race even before you entered. Where are you? I have got the victory and the glory. Where are you? And today... God is calling his young people to say, where are you? I've come to this garden alone. And I've come and I've looked for you. I've searched for you. You see, I created you in my image because I love you. And I'm expecting you about this time before eternity comes, before time is no more. And we need to leave because I'm coming back for my people. But you are not here. Where are you? Where are you? I have created a garden for you, but you seem to go on the other side because the grass looks greener and the temptation's outside. But I'm asking you, where are you today? God is asking, where are you? Because wherever you are in your life, 
he is willing, he is able to come and find you. If we could just have a testimony from some of the older people in church to tell us how God got them through time and time again. If we could have a real testimony to say, do you know what, Lord, I was the one. <laughs> I was the one that was caught out. I was the one that lied. I was the one that couldn't control myself. But the fact that I was lost and out of control and you came and you disrupted my flight and guided me safely home. We need encouragement too. We need to hear how God has done it for you. Where are you? Hear the voice of the Holy Spirit asking you, where are you? God is saying, do you know what? It's not about where you are. Because wherever you are, I am omnipresent. Wherever you are, I am there. Your sin does not intimidate me. Your rejection doesn't faze me. I have enough stamina to go through eternity. Where are you? If you're an eater or a deacon, I invite you to come forward because I'm going to invite the young people to come forward and pray because God is saying, do you know what? Remember me in your youth. Remember me in your youth so that you may live long upon this world. The title for today, make me a servant. How can I make you unless I find you? How can I make you unless you come to me? How can I make something that is not of me? God is saying, where are you? He is the potter ready to mold you and shape you, but you need to make sure that you are in the right place. You need to make sure that your destination is heaven. God delivers. God delivers those who are doubtful. Those who are doubting Christianity, those who are doubting their own sexuality, those who are doubting their own purpose. God doesn't just call the delightful, but he does call the dangerous. Those who are living a dangerous life, one foot in church, the other in the world. One day your bed, the next day someone else's. God is calling the dangerous. Those who know better, who should be doing better. God is calling us back to repentance, back to himself. It doesn't take me to tell you because God has already provided you with the Holy Spirit to prick your conscience for you to know what you are doing. I don't need to tell you. That's why only God searches the intentions of the heart because he knows what he says to you. I invite the elders even the pastors to come forward because I'm about to invite our young people to come forward because contrary to popular belief, young people don't need another lecture. They don't even need another sermon. What they really need is someone to lift them up in prayer. God is asking, where are you? And if you hear his voice saying to you, do you know what my child, it's time that you came home because you know what? You're living your life contrary to my will. You see, you, you look like you're on board. You're fitting in with the context. Your behavior is telling me you're a Christian, but your thoughts and the intentions of your heart is telling me otherwise. If you hear the voice of God calling you to come home, calling you to just check your destination, I invite you to come forward because I'm a testament of prayer. One thing that God gave me was prayer. And if you look back over the years, you may not have seen me in church, but I was there until the day that I said, all right, Lord, use me. For he was calling me and I did not respond. But the day that I said, Lord, use me, your will be done, he took over. You see me, I don't like to stand in front of anyone and talk. But God said, it's not about you. I can tell you all day what I, but Christ is saying, not I, but Christ. And if you're sitting next to someone thinking, what will they think of me? They cannot save you. They cannot save you. 
If you acknowledge that God is your only strength, your only help, I invite you to come because we're going to pray. If you acknowledge that your life, even your destination, is bound for hell, I invite you to come forward to pray. You see, when we talk about prayer, there is so much power in prayer, even in the Word of God. You see, Jesus spoke. When the, when the, um, when Judas came to collect Jesus in the garden and they said, who are you? Are you Jesus? Jesus said, I am he. And the Bible says that the words that he spoke had so much power that they knocked the men dead to the ground. And when we read the writings of Miss White, Inspiration, it says that for that moment when God declared himself, when he spoke his own name, divinity flashed through humanity and the men fell as dead men. You see, I don't know about you, but I need God to speak a word into my life today. I need him to break through. You see, when Jesus came and Lazarus had died, he came to the tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. You see, today God is waiting to call out your name because you may be here in the physical, but spiritually a lot of us are dead. He is able to resurrect you. When Jesus came and saw the disciples terrified of the storm on the sea, he just said, peace be still. You see, God is able to calm the storms even in your life. His power is such that he didn't even have to wrestle with the storm. He just stepped on it to say, look how much power, just in my foot alone, just step on it. God is able to step on anything in your life because his love for you exceeds the amount of sins that you could ever sin. His love for you is not phased by your condition. For his love is unconditional. We're going to pray now. If you hear the voice of the Lord talking to you. I say young people, if you hear the voice of the Lord talking to you and you say, do you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I'll do it whenever. Even some people who plan to be here today did not make it to see today. So if you're putting off your salvation because you're enjoying the flight, you're enjoying the journey, it seems to be comfortable, such is the journey to hell. God is saying, do you know what? With Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. And when he is on your plane, he will pilot you safely home. I don't know about you. But I do know that God has made a difference in my life. I don't know about you, but I do know that the time when I was lost, he came and found me. I don't know about you, but I do know that just like every story in the Bible, even the story of the prodigal son who returns home and the father seeing him away off, before his home he starts running and he starts running and the father doesn't care what it looks like to society for the son who disrespected and dishonored his name he keeps running how many times have we disrespected and dishonored God's name the father keeps on running despite his old age despite himself he keeps on running he keeps on running for he sees the son not by how he is dressed, but because of the walk. He remembers that, my child, I taught you how to walk. I recognize you. God sees past your pretense. He sees past your attire, your clothing, and he sees you for who you are, despite yourself. God's eyes are not physical, church. When it says he sees, we're not talking about the physical. He does see that, but spiritually, God's eye sees you. And wherever you are, 
wherever you are, God is waiting for you to give him permission to step on board. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to give you praise and give you thanks. For Lord, when we were lost, you sent your son to come and save us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you thanks, not because of what you have done for us, but because of who you are, Heavenly Father. We give you thanks because even though we don't even recognize the flight that we're on because we feel that we are okay, we feel comfortable in our situation, we feel comfortable in sin, Heavenly Father. We ask you to break through, Lord, for the devil has put a barrier between us and you. And Lord, we cannot pick up your frequency because our sins have hid your face from us. Lord, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you for cleansing, Heavenly Father. We ask you to instill in us a purpose, Lord, so that we will acknowledge you, Heavenly Father, and to say, Lord, your will be done in our lives, Heavenly Father. Not everyone is called to preach to sing, to teach, but everyone is called, Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, we want to say that we are sorry for what we have done, Heavenly Father, and true repentance is not just saying sorry, but it's meaning it and turning away, Heavenly Father. Teach us how to turn away, to go against the grain, against the peer pressure, against the norms, Heavenly Father. Teach us how to walk in your way, Heavenly Father. I pray right now for the people who have come at the front acknowledging their need for you. Despite what people may say and what they may think, Heavenly Father, they acknowledge that it is better to be saved than lost, Heavenly Father. They acknowledge their need for a living Savior, Heavenly Father. So as the elders and the pastors and the team are praying for them, I pray right now, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to them in a special way. I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you will guide them, that you will be their defense, their security, Heavenly Father, for the devil. He will try and get us, but Lord, he goes in for the kill. But Heavenly Father, we thank God because you have already overcome, Heavenly Father. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound on earth and Lord we read that Michael and his angels Lord there was war and Satan was defeated so Heavenly Father just press the replay for us so we can see him defeated in our lives just press the replay because Lord your power doesn't get old so Heavenly Father finally I ask that if there is anyone that were in their seats and the Holy Spirit was talking to them Lord but they did not move Lord do not forget them Lord we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with them Lord I pray that you will not stop ministering to them you will not stop prodding them Lord to come back to your truth Heavenly Father because it will not be funny Lord when we enter heaven and we look around and the people we expect to see will not be there Bless Ilford Church, Heavenly Father. I pray right now for everyone here this afternoon, every family represented. I pray that you will send your holy angels to guide, guard, and protect, Heavenly Father. May we acknowledge you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords over our lives. For we ask all of these things in the precious and worthy name of Jesus. Let God's people say amen. Amen. Sing it, I'm running back to you. I'm running back to you.
just want to thank Sister Shireen for that powerful message. Was you blessed? Indeed, uh, God stepped onto my plane and he redirect the destination. Today we're going to close and I would like for lunch is provided um, in, the, in the hall. So if we can clear that quickly as possible so that we can lay aside and the hospitality team uh, can set up for lunch. We want you to stay uh, for the whole day. As you can see in your bulletins, we have lunch from 1.30 through to 3.30. And then we have Impact Ilford, a street witnessing from 3.30 to 5.30. Amen? And then from 6, where we return here uh, for our concert. And our afternoon program we got a uh, various artists lined up so we expect to see you back here it's a lovely day we got the marquee out and some rooms upstairs to take your lunch and to eat but right now we're gonna close in benediction and bless the food can we all stand let us continue to give God the praise let's bow our heads Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the word that was delivered today. We want to thank you for impacting our hearts through the message. Lord, we recognize how much you love us. In that you are willing to die for us. And Lord, we are sure that one day you are coming once again to take us, your people, home to be with you forevermore. So Lord, I ask that you will wrestle with us. You'll not leave us. You'll continue to direct every facet of our life. And as we declare you our God, we will declare you to others also. As we continue with our day, we pray that your presence will be felt in our conversation. We ask dear Lord to bless the food that has been provided. We pray that it will sustain us throughout the day. We give thanks for those who have provided it for us. And Lord, may we continue to enjoy one another's fellowship. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to invite the praise team to sing us out. God sent his son. God sent his son. Again. God sent his son. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love. He lived for me. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. Savior is, is.
it's a hold A newborn baby And feel the pride And joy he gives But greater still The calm assurance This child can face Uncertain days Because he lives Let's sing because